How can a company ensure that data privacy is baked in from the beginning? I mean, is that the first thing that should be discussed? Yeah, it's a tricky one. I think the first thing really is obviously to focus on your product and what it is and your plan for success. Although having said that, I think a lot of people do leave privacy considerations too late. And it is, it is a tricky thing because often you don't know how people are going to use data, you know, what actually is going to happen later on. So I think a good thing to have is to have someone who's an advocate for the users and for their privacy. So you need to find someone in your organization or hire someone kind of early on who can be that difficult person, you know, who asks the critical questions. Um, and if you have someone like that, I think it helps you, you know, create policies or processes that will protect people's data. But it's it's not an easy it's not an easy thing to have, especially not at the beginning. Right. How have things like frictionless sharing shaped Last FM's data policies? Yes, that's an interesting question. We've had a lot of internal debates about it over the last few months. So obviously when Facebook launched the ability that you could you know, basically just bulk send data to Facebook, so it's kind of a, a very seductive idea, this frictionless sure. sharing. But there's also kind of the adage, um, just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much the approach we took. So we kind of looked at what happened to the early adopters of this. So I think didn't put enough thought into you know, the repercussions of what they were doing. So a good example is The Guardian in the UK. You know, they basically had an opt-out policy where their users, every time they viewed an article in The Guardian, it went into a Facebook profile. Mm -hmm. And here you are reading an article maybe about some sensitive political subjects in your right. country, and suddenly it's appearing in your Facebook feed. I mean, that's an extreme example, but um, it shows, I think, how they hadn't possibly thought it all through, and they've since backtracked on that and made it an opt-in. Um, and similarly, like to us, a bit more relevant is obviously how Spotify was sending all the songs that we've been listening on Spotify to Facebook. Mm -hmm. And we kind of thought about, about this, like, what value does this add for our users? Um, if you're basically just spamming every song to Facebook, right. people who might not even have similar taste in music to you, what are they learning about you? What are you getting back from it? So we kind of just took a step back and we think we prefer the approach where you basically have a bit more control over what you share. Uh -huh. um, so we're going to be adding features where you share uh, like significant events. So when you love a track, that could be something interesting. Yeah. When you attend events, that's something that could be interesting because maybe someone sees that on Facebook and wants to join you. Um, so it's very much, you know, also rolling up data. So maybe doing a summary of users, top artists for mm -hmm. a week, as opposed to every single song they've listened yeah. to. We think that gives more value back to our users. I mean, does that just start with user-centric design? I mean, is that really the fundamental part of it? Of saying, you know, what, what is the user actually going to get out of this experience? Yeah, I think so. Definitely. Do you feel that um, enthusiasm for big data and data products sometimes causes companies to, to gloss over? privacy and transparency. Yeah. It's, it feels like they don't necessarily go into it saying, we're going to ignore that. It's yeah. just the enthusiasm seems to be placed elsewhere. Exactly. And I think these examples we just discussed here about friction and sharing, it's like a perfect, mm -hmm. uh, perfect example. Like these companies, Spotify and The Guardian, you know, it sounded like a really good idea, enthusiastic. I mean, it, it does sound like a good idea, but if you follow it through, sometimes you can't always envision what's going to happen. And then, unfortunately, if you find out too late, maybe you've got some negative publicity by then. So it is very hard to temper that enthusiasm. Right. And you don't want to go too far because you might undermine some of the enthusiasm for yeah. a good product. Right? Yeah, indeed. So last question for you. Is there a rule of thumb or sort of a touchstone that you use when you're considering a new data initiative? Something like, uh, if people knew what was involved in this, would I feel good or bad about them knowing about that? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, so we're in a fortunate position in that Basically, what we have is music listening data, so it's not that sensitive, and what we do with it really isn't that creepy. Mm -hmm. um, but having said that, there's definitely, you always, if you've got people's data and you're going to use it in a new way, you have to you know, think about the implications of that. So there's the classic opt-in versus opt-out approach. Um, and so what we, we typically tend to favor opt-in because it gives users more control. But like exactly like you said, it might undermine some amazing new product feature that you have. So one of the things we've also looked at doing is when we introduce a new way of using people's data, up until that point, maybe the people, you know, the point when you release the feature, everyone who's registered before that date, you have them opt in. And then maybe all the people who sign up from that point, 
you have them opt out. So then when they sign, when they create an account, you know, you can message them and say, these are the things we're going to be doing with their data, and you add the new thing. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully you still get enough useful data because you have a few of the old users who will opt in, and then the majority of the new users are already opted in, and hopefully most of them don't opt out and you'll get your critical mass for the data you need for that feature to be useful. So you're, you're working with the expectation that had already been set. Yeah. Right. Interesting. Great. Well, thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate sure. you taking the time. Thank you.